GPU cooler swaps have been growing in popularity a lot on this channel and you guys seem to really enjoy the Morpheus 2 cooler swap that we looked at a couple weeks ago. Since then though, there have been so many requests for this particular cooler that we're going to look at today and that's the Arctic Accelero 3. So just like the Morpheus 2, this is an aftermarket cooling solution for your GPU which aims to do a much better job than what's typical. The EVGA SC2 cooler that we'll be comparing it to today is what I'd consider the middle ground for a a GTX 1080 Ti cooler. It's significantly better than a Founders Edition or Blower style card, but being a two slot card, it is a few degrees behind bigger options like the Strix or Gaming X cards. Now, compared to the Morpheus 2 from Rajin Tech, there are a couple benefits here also. The first and most obvious is that the Accelero 3 actually comes with fans, whereas with the Morpheus 2, you'll need to purchase and install your own. Now, that might not sound like a big deal, but it does increase the cost of the final product by about $30 and when you factor in the fan splitters that you'll need as well, you're looking at about $100 for a functional cooler. The Accelero 3 though can be had for $69 on Amazon and comes with everything you need. Some people will prefer the Morpheus 2 though in terms of flexibility and as I mentioned in the initial review, I actually enjoy the fact that users are able to mount their own fans and basically customize the cooler to look like or perform however they want, whether it's high performance static pressure fans or quiet noctuas. With the Accelero 3 though, there's no mounting your own fans, unless you want to use zip ties or if you happen to have fans sitting directly underneath, something that we'll be looking at a little bit later. In terms of the way the cooler looks, I'd have to say it looks pretty dated when standing next to a modern cooler and shroud design like the EVGA SC2. There's no real gamer aesthetic or design happening here, and if you came here looking for RGB, well, prepare to be disappointed. The Accelero 3 is all business when it comes to cooling, but it would be nice to see a refresh of this dated shroud design. I'm not asking for lighting effects or anything like that, but something other than this black glossy plastic would be real nice. Let me know what you guys think down below. Anyway, the fans that come pre-installed are 92mm fans that spin up to 2000 RPM and Arctic claim that these are pretty quiet as well and I'm going to have to say that I definitely agree. Size also might be a concern for some users as when we looked at the Morpheus 2 despite the very impressive cooling performance, you do end up with about a 3.5 slot card which unfortunately meant that it couldn't fit in my personal system inside the N case M1. The Accelero 3 however does manage to squeeze in there with a few conditions which we'll go into a little bit more depth later. The compatibility list from Arctic site is pretty extensive also which is nice to see. Pretty much any moderate to high end Nvidia card is compatible with the majority of AMD cards supported as well and despite the RX Vega 400 or 500 series not officially being supported, I have seen people use the Accelero 3 with a few of those cards here and there so I wouldn't be too quick to count them out. And lastly, the spec that matters most, the Accelero 3 claims a cooling capacity of 300 watts, which is 20% less than the Morpheus 2, which is rated for 360 watts. This gives us a pretty good insight as to what the results could be, but as always, there's only one way to be sure. So time to prep that 1080 Ti for installation and see what this thing is all about. Okay, so the 1080 Ti is prepped and ready to go, and of course, all of the mounting hardware comes included in the box, along with some aluminium heatsinks, which we'll be using for the MOSFETs and memory. I did try and use the stock EVGA SC2 cooling plate like I did with the Morpheus 2, but unfortunately, the cold plate for the Accelero 3 is quite large and ends up conflicting with these screw positions for the original cooling plate. As I said though, I did try it, and although idle temperatures looked pretty impressive, the cooler was evidently not made making anywhere near enough contact with the GPU. If we take a look at the EVGA SC2 cold plate, we can see where the cutouts have been made for it to fit with the original PCB cooling plate, whereas expectedly the Accelero 3 doesn't accommodate it. So we will be using the aluminium heatsinks with the included thermal adhesive. 
So starting with the GDDR5X memory chips, apply a thin layer of thermal adhesive, mount the heatsink with some downward pressure, and then repeat for the remaining chips. You'll also want to do the same for the capacitors and then the MOSFETs that are part of the V-Core VRM, but leave the inductors, which are these silver square components here, as those are fairly heat tolerant. Let the adhesive dry for about two hours and we should be ready to mount the cooler now. The first thing that we need to do is mount the spaces on the cooler itself, and this is done with these adhesive rings. Now, in the case of the 1080 Ti, I used the small spaces that were included. Just keep in mind that if you're using an AMD card, for example, you may need to use something different. So with the cooler ready for mounting, we need to apply the foam pad on the flip side of the GPU so that the mounting bracket doesn't create any shorts. And then we can mount the GPU to the cooler with the mounting bracket, spaces, and screws. Plug in the fan header and we're ready to go. So with the Accelero 3 on the open test bench, we performed all three tests as usual. 1000 RPM for our silent profile, 1500 RPM for the moderate profile, and usually we'd be testing 2000 RPM for the performance profile, however the max RPM that I was able to achieve for the Accelero 3 was 1850 RPM. Not sure why this was happening though, since in total these fans would be consuming under 400 milliamps of current, which is far below what the fan controller is capable of. Anyway, let's get to the results. So on the graph here, we have the EVGA SC2, Morpheus 2, and the Accelero 3 all at the three different fan speeds. And let's start off with the Accelero 3 at a measly 1000 RPM. Here, the GPU temps are significantly better than anything that the EVGA SC2 has to offer. However, the lack of airflow means that VRM and memory temperatures are a little bit warmer. Compared to the Morpheus 2 at 1000 RPM, we're not too far behind. And in fact, GPU temps are within one degree C and the VRM and memory temps are significantly better yielding a more impressive result overall. Stepping up to 1500 RPM now we get a similar picture. The Accelero 3 is roughly one degree warmer than the Morpheus 2 but the PCB components are much more effectively cooled. And at 1850 RPM the Accelero 3 provides the best VRM and memory cooling in the stack by a decent margin with the peak VRM temperature reading at just 56 degrees C. All right, so temperatures are really impressive on an open test bench, but what about inside the Encase M1? Well, I first tried to cram the Accelero 3 in with the pre-installed fans, but no matter what I did, I couldn't get it to fit. I even tried unmounting my CPU cooler and repositioning all of the custom power supply cables, but the main conflict here is with the front IO connectors. Honestly, I probably could have wrestled it in there, but I didn't want to risk flexing the PCB any more than I already was and possibly damaging the 1080 Ti because that would be a very expensive mistake. Instead, I decided to try installing the Accelero 3 without the pre-installed fans, as this is a configuration that I see quite a lot for the NCase M1. And finally, I was able to fit it, and I was very interested to see how the temperature would differ now with 120mm fans running underneath. Also, I was able to slide the EK backplate over the top as I was using a different mounting bracket, so hiding that bare PCB is always appreciated. It's not screwed in or anything, but the thermal pads underneath help give it some traction, and I found that it actually does soak up quite a lot of heat. Now, to start with, I had the bottom 120mm fans configured as intakes, since this is how they were configured with the EVGA SC2 cooler, but the temperatures here were very underwhelming. I started with the fan RPM set to 2000 RPM, and even here we can see both the GPU and VRM temps are way hotter than they should be, but it's the memory temps that were the main concern here. Even with the fan RPM lowered to 1500, which I would consider to be a fairly reasonable level for these fans, the GDDR5X memory was peaking at 90 degrees C and the GPU clock is all over the place. So I wanted to see how the temps would differ with those bottom fans now in a pull configuration and the airflow design here would be a rear intake from the CPU cooler and then exhausting down the bottom. Now, before I clicked run on the test, I was blown away, literally, by the amount of airflow that was being pushed out of the bottom of the case. Seriously, it felt like there was a fan pointed directly at me. It turns out that flipping the fans is all it took to get the GPU, VRM, and memory cool again. At 2000 RPM, the Accelero 3 is surpassing my expectations with a peak temperature of 53.1 degrees C, and even at 1500 RPM, which was virtually silent with headphones on, we're just below 60 degrees C for the GPU, and the VRM and memory are still relatively cool. 
If you want truly silent performance, the Accelero 3 at 1000 RPM is still performing very well at just 71.9 degrees C, but 1500 RPM is ultimately what I would recommend. And for a quick noise test, I didn't get the chance to test the Accelero 3 with the pre-installed fans since it was quite noisy outside during the day, but at the end of the day with the Accelero 3 in my system, I did get a quick chance for some recording and I was impressed yet again. And so you probably get the idea where I'm going with this. The Arctic Accelero 3 is going to be replacing the EVGA SC2 stock cooler in my personal build in the NKS M1 for pretty obvious reasons. Not only is the cooling performance outstanding, but I really enjoy the industrial look with exposed fin stacks and copper heat pipes. The clean unbranded look is something that I envisioned for the NKS M1 build when I first set out to build it. And to finally achieve that is a pretty good feeling. Even when compared out of the box to the Morpheus 2 from Rajantech, it makes a pretty solid case, with VRM and memory temps which were cooler across all fan profiles, and GPU temps which were within a single degree. So as always, I want to hear what you guys think in the comment section down below. Let me know what you think of the Arctic Accelero 3, and also if you would like to see this compared to something like the NZXT G12 or the EVGA Hybrid, which are both liquid cooling solutions. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and as always, I will see you all in the next one.